Hello again, everybody. Today, we're going to have a look at the question of the right to protest. If you go out on the streets and you protest, you're giving your views, you're making a point. You may not, you may not like something that the government is doing. You may have issues about racism or the treatment of women, or it might be a protest in favor of, of abortion or against abortion. People feel strongly about different things. And in a democratic society, they should have the freedom to protest. So it's got something to do with free speech. So if we look at the next slide, free speech can be defined as the sharing of opinion through open discussion a way to exchange, teach, learn, and challenge other, each other's perspectives. It involves, it involves conversations, debates, education, criticism, and the sharing of experience. Not the same thing as hate speech. Hate speech is nasty and it's not very constructive. Free speech is fine. Hate speech, no. But if a protest is peaceful, and if you look at the lady there, she's got peaceful protest is, is a right. You can give your views and you can stop and speak to, to speak to spectators who may have a different view and you can argue with them in a constructive and peaceful way. And you can put your point over and it comes over on the news and it comes over on, in, in the newspapers that you have made a point. It might be against war a particular war. There was a massive protest in London in 2003 against the Iraq war. It can be all kinds of things. If you go back in history, the suffragettes protested to achieve the vote for women. So people have a right to protest. If you live in a democracy, that is. Now, if you lived in a government run by someone like Adolf Hitler, in Germany in the 1930s and 1940s, you had no right to protest. If you dared to go on the streets protesting against Hitler, you would have been beaten up and you'd been thrown into prison and you probably would have been executed. So we have to realize that we're very fortunate to live in a democratic society where free speech is allowed and peaceful protest is allowed. Now, Peaceful protest is a, is, is a right. But what happens if things turn out violent? Well, sometimes a protest can start peacefully and it can end peacefully. But sometimes a protest starts peacefully and there is violence. Now, it could be that the violence comes from counter-protesters people on the other side who want to protest against against the, the initial protest and they are the ones who offer the violence. Or it could be a bit of both. It could be violence from one side or it could be violence from the other side. So the police are, all, are, are obviously drawn in the middle of all this and they have to keep order. They will police a peaceful march to make sure that the people have the right to protest and are not intimidated by uh, by other people along the way and to ensure that it's done in an orderly way. But if protesters start to commit acts of violence, if they start to throw things, stones or whatever, or bottles, and if fights break out, it is the duty of the police to keep order. But that is easier said than done because, of course, you get to the question then, how much force should the police use? Well, they've got their rubber truncheons, and you can see there it's beginning to get out of hand a little bit. It's not too bad with that one compared to the ones you've got there, which really had a full-scale riot. But still, the police are sometimes accused of being heavy-handed. They're sometimes accused of actually of actually turning on a fairly peaceful protest and the violence is, is only as a reaction to the police violence. Sometimes that criticism is made.
Should the police be allowed to use rubber bullets? Again, if things get out of hand, there you've got the policeman and he's got his his rifle and the rubber bullet. Now, this is not like a bullet as in the army bullet, which, which can kill you, but it can knock you to the ground. And you can see there examples of where rubber bullets can really hurt. If you believe in freedom, if you believe maybe if, if, if you're a big supporter of people's rights, you might say, no, the police shouldn't be allowed to do that. That's excessive force. Using transients is acceptable, as you've got there, but rubber bullets is unacceptable. But from the police point of view, they might turn around and say, right, well, this is our job, but don't we have the right to protect, to protect ourselves and to defend ourselves? This is a pretty awful situation where a policeman's been attacked. And in fact, this policeman who was attacked was going to lose his life. Policemen sometimes are killed in dealing with, with various kinds of disorder and also with terrorist attacks, of course. Don't the police have a right to defend themselves? I bet that policeman would say, yes, I do. And if, I, if, if the situation gets out of hand and I have to use rubber bullets, I will use rubber bullets. So what's our conclusion? You have to create a balance. You have to have the right to protest. If we get, if we, if we say you can't protest at all, if we say, no, you can't go out in the streets and a ban is put in it, that is an attack on our freedom. But you can't allow violence like the example on the left. The example on the right is quite an old one. It's the 1960s, it's the time of Martin Luther King, it's the civil rights in the United States. And as you can see there, it's very, very peaceful. It's very orderly. That's quite acceptable. But what you've got on the left is just wanton vandalism and rioting. Really, should that should that be seen as, as the right to protest? There must be a balance between the two. The one on the right is acceptable. The one on the left is unacceptable. So... There we are, everybody, the whole business of the right to protest. Now, I think you need to discuss with your form tutor what you think about these issues. Thank you very much.